What is going on, guys? Welcome to Gump's Podcast. Today, we got a guest. Uh, introduce yourself. Uh, Superman Nico from the New World Nerd. Okay, so today, I'm hoping that we're not going to have an hour-long podcast. I mean, don't mind me. I mean, hour and a half long. Hour long, kind of just a sweet spot. But I'm going to try to make sure we don't ramble on too much. I'm going to have to be a little bit more strict on that end. But uh, just, if things get a little spicy, well, guess what? That's what you sub to the channel for. Okay, so we got uh, four topics at hand, and we're going to have some Twitter questions. I think we only got one, but when the time comes, I will pull them up. Um, so we're going to start off with the topic. Um, the glass reviews uh, started coming out, and I'm not going to lie. I'm going to keep this really brief, by the way. Kind of disappointed. Uh, I'm still really excited to see the movie. I'm going to like just make sure my... My expectations are a little more at bay. I'm not that kind of guy that uh, sees a bad review and just says, like, oh, screw it. Uh, the movie's absolute tits. I'm not going to watch it. There's a chance if I was not really anticipating the movie. I don't know. Um, let's see. Like, just a random movie that was coming out that wasn't nerdy-based. Solo. It's, hmm. it, it you didn't, was kind of tough. Go see, star- you didn't go see Solo. I, no, there was a. Re- it was not because of the reviews. It was because my one friend, who's a massive Star Wars fan, um, he's like, "Listen, uh, do you, did you see the rest of the uh, uh, the Clone Wars uh, series?" I'm like, "No, um, I didn't finish it. I'm like on season three. This is what, before I finished it." And he's like, "Yeah, then you're probably not gonna like it. I want to go see. It. It's not worth the fifteen bucks." I'm like, "The fact that he's saying that." Surprised me because he's a massive Star Wars nerd. He's literally got on his arms. He's got two big ass tattoos about uh, like some random alien language and shit like that. He's got a fucking tattoo on his chest with the Empire versus the Rebellion and shit like that. I'm like, dude, he's a fucking nerd. And the fact that he said that, you know, yeah. But like, so no, that that didn't have a case in that. But like. Reviews only affect me when it's like a smaller budget movie that I was not really like dying to see. Like if reviews are shit about Godzilla King of the Monsters, which it better not be, but if that was the case, I'm still watching it because what my favorite monsters on screen, I'm still going to watch Glass no matter what because I'm still really excited about to see the movie. I saw Split, loved it. I loved Unbreakable. Um, the more I think about it, the more I really digest the movie. I really love, like, I just start loving it even more. So I'm gonna watch it either way. Uh, it's just a little disheartening that it's not on the caliber of where my initial expectations were. But like, hey, maybe this lowered my expectations to the point where I walk in there and it, I'm gonna end up loving the movie. That's what I'm gonna hope for. Uh, Nico, you said you wanted to do a hard pass on this, right? Uh, pretty much. I don't. I don't like talking about like other people's reviews, cause, especially when I haven't seen the movie. Uh, but uh, Unbreakable wasn't super well received uh, at, initially. True. So uh, I think True. I think this movie can still be anything. Uh, I think there's a big for what I want this movie to be. It's really a big, not a big difference, but it's different than the things I liked about Split. So if people are going into this maybe thinking of just a, just a straight direct sequel from Split or maybe they're bringing a lot of baggage from Unbreakable, uh, I don't know. But I think that could definitely hamper it because these are two really different movies. Either way, M. Night Shyamalan, I try and keep my uh, expectations really low. I find if they're the lower they are, the better I'll enjoy the movie because he, ooh, baby, did he crash and burn in the last airbender. He uh, So even how good Split was, how good Unbreak, I really liked Unbreakable, like I'll still hold that forever. So yeah, uh, review, whatever. Whatever they say, that's fine. I'm still going to be there. Uh, I'm going to go watch the movie. Okay, so um, on to number two. Actually, no, I forgot. I forgot to mention, uh, I, like, not even, like, 15, 20 minutes ago, I just received word that um, the guy who directed Solo, um, I forget the guy's name already. Ron Howard? Um, uh, Ron Howard. Uh, he was in talks. No, let me let me look this up before I say anything crazy. Um, it's a, they're, they're planning on making a Silver Surfer movie. Um, mm. Ron... Um, let me just look this up really quick. Silver Surfer movie. So, because Ron Howard doesn't sound like it. Um, let's see. So uh, Adam McKay. This, okay. Uh, he's a 
He's directed like Step Brothers and Talladega Nights and The Big Short. Okay, okay, that's that that's where I, that's where my thought process was going to. Okay, so um I it's not confirmed yet. I didn't get a chance to go deep into it cuz yet again, like I said I just heard about this 15 minutes ago. Um I'm interested. I will say that. Um I know Nico's just hearing about this too probably. Um it's an interesting choice for a director, especially with the character. I don't know too much about Silver Surfer. I'm not going to pretend like I know a lot about him. I know that the whole thing with him and Galactus, uh, at first Silver Surfer is a villain, then he becomes a hero. Um, he's kind of he's kind of enslaved to Galactus. So there's a lot of good storylines you can make there. There's like I feel like you can definitely make a big tragedy movie out of this, just like being forced to kill people, stuff like that. There's a lot of potential there. And, and, I mean, yeah, you can also make it a comedy. You can make it, like, like in a, like a prison break movie. Like, trying to escape the grasp of uh, Galactus. Maybe he, the entire movie, he, he just ran away and Galactus is chasing him. There's a lot of potential there. And I'm really excited to see it. Adam McKay, it's interesting. Like, you said Step Brothers. He's got great comedy chops. I love the guy to death. Um, but it's an interesting choice. But I will reserve judgment because I have been proven wrong on multiple occasions. Because, like, the guy who's directing uh, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, that guy literally made nothing but horror movies. And I'm talking about on, like, just shit budgets. I'm talking about, like, probably five million biggest. So I got really anxious about that movie. And now look at me now. I'm super stoked. It's probably, other than uh, Endgame, it's my most anticipated movie of that year. Like, I'm super excited. So... If Adam McKay is big enough of a fan, I will put my full-blown support into him. For all I know, Silver Surfer is his biggest uh, favorite. His biggest favorite superhero. Who knows? Uh, Nico, what are your thoughts? Uh, he was. Uh, I remember when Edgar Wright dropped out. He was in talks to direct Ant Man instead, of, or before Peyton Reed came on board. Mm-hmm. And uh, I definitely. Yeah, I, that. I think that he's a good director. Uh, big Short. I didn't see it. He got nominated for Best Picture. You know. Uh, he makes quality or movies I like, and like you were saying, there's been directors out there that take on a project and do really well. Like a James Wan horror director did mm-hmm. did a Fast and Furious. Now did Aquaman. Did a really good job uh, because he cares about the character. Uh, I don't want to see Silver Surfer as a comedy. Uh, I've been proven. Yeah, me too. Uh, but I mean. So would this be under the Fox banner, or is this going to be in the MCU? If it's outside of the MCU, uh, I would really rather them just wait. Do you know? Does it um, uh, yeah, I, I like I said, I just found 15 minutes ago. But if okay. I were to speculate, and I know a lot about the Disney-Fox uh, merger. I know a lot about that. I know technically they just have like one more state to make it official to sign off and shit like that. I forget what it was. I think it was like Michigan. I'm not too I'm not too familiar on that. But I know they're basically close to finishing. So I don't think it's gonna be Fox. Good. And plus Fox I I'm ninety nine percent sure this is gonna be the last year. If not this year, um next year, twenty twenty is gonna be the last year that Fox is gonna be a stable film studio. They probably have one or maybe even two uh, movies coming out twenty twenty. So to me it wouldn't make sense to greenlight a or not even greenlight start it start talks for a Silver Surfer movie, but what also makes me a little curious, like it makes me have a thinking emoji, is the fact that technically they're not allowed to be even talking about Fox and stuff like that because I know part of the deal is they can't plan on, you know, making these movies, and because uh, that's why. Uh, Kevin Feige hasn't even put a single thought to the X-Men. I mean, I, I could guarantee you the guy has thought about it, like, when, but he hasn't put his attention towards it. He's just like, hey, it would be interesting if we put the X-Men here. So it's a, it's interesting on that aspect. It just makes me think, like, what's going on? Are these talks just like, hey, if the uh, deal comes through, would you like to do this? Or like, hey... I, maybe even uh, Adam came up to uh, Marvel's like, l- like, yo, guys, listen, I got a great idea for a Silver Surfer movie. I know uh, Fox is giving you the property, the rights. Uh, here's an idea. I'll give you a pitch. Um, it's still a little sketch, um, but it's definitely an interesting thing. I'm gonna have to look into a lot more after this podcast, and uh, maybe I'll give you guys an update video uh, in the time being. Uh, any final thoughts, Nico, before we move on? Uh, it sounds a lot like. Uh, how they're always like, oh, 
uh, this like Blue Beetle in development, like you know, just a bunch, yeah, of, like Booster Gold in development. It's just like I'll when they uh, reveal the title at a Comic Con and put a release date. That's when I'll get excited. I love Silver Surfer. Um, I started uh, subscribing to this theory that uh, that Galactus is the Power Stone. Or that he is like a remnant, or because that's who Galactus is. Uh, he was a member of the universe that was before the Marvel mm-hmm. universe. So I, yeah, I remember that. so I think that uh, he. I want him to be the Power Stone because I feel like he can't have those Infinity Stones uh, in the universe after Endgame. That's a whole. Other, that's actually the video I'm working on currently. I'm trying to like make each person a stone. Uh, I was thinking so the Silver Surfer could be the Space Stone. Don't ha- haven't had it fully fleshed uh. out, but obviously, like I'm being one of those Star Wars fans, would be like, it has to be this. If it's not this, I don't want it. <laughs> like RJ better show up. <laughs> like this is my tinfoil hat theory. So uh, I would love to see the Silver Surfer. I would have loved to have seen him like interact with the Guardians in like a James Gunn world movie. Won't get that. Um, but yeah. uh, Adam McKay, because you know, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, but James Gunn made a joke uh, ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, Adam McKay yeah. definitely someone I would trust. But I'm not. It's, it's up in the air. Not going to stress too much about it right now. Right now. I'm not going to lie though. Your theory is actually a pretty good one because, like, it's crazy thing. Like, people are asking, where do you go in the MCU after this? I, I had a couple theories. You do a Planet Hulk, and apparently, I didn't have this in a topic, but they said that uh, Captain Marvel is going to be alluding to his Secret Wars in the future. Um, I hope they don't build it up like Infinity War. Like, I know the story. I, I'm not the... I haven't read it. I'm not the biggest fan, but, but that's beside the point. But, like, I feel like the next big thing you can do is have each individual stone, like, find their... Like, who... R- where it originated from. Like you said, Galactus being the Power Stone. And Silver Surfer being the, uh, the uh, uh, Space Stone is not a bad idea. Like, I could definitely see that. And... Like, it would definitely explain why he's so freaking powerful. And um, uh, Marvel is definitely known for, like, manipulating, kind of changing some of the lore and the storylines, stuff like that, for the better. Because they're in a, a very elaborate universe. This isn't comics where you can kind of bend the rules left and right. Um, they have a very strict uh, continuity uh, thing going on. So, like, I feel like having a time stone uh, being the, the maker of... Of Silver Surfer and stuff like that. I feel like that would be freaking dope. I honestly would love that. That's not a bad theory. I'll give you that though. Yeah, uh, um, I'm. I am in the process of making this video, so I'll give you one more. So I gave you Power Stone is Galactus. Uh, Soul. Uh, the Silver Surfer will be the Space Stone, and um, I'll give you one of the more obvious ones. Uh, have the Soul Stone be Adam Warlock, even though it has that casing or whatever. There is a, a, a phrase that uh, Red Skull says. Uh, in Infinity War is like the Soul Stone has a sort of wisdom, so I think there may be something there. Have to go on to New World Nerds. It's probably like in a week to figure out the rest of the theory. <laughs> Whoever the other three people are, uh, shameless plug. Yeah, we'll definitely be able to see that in Guardians of the Galaxy three. Whenever that comes out, whenever they find a director, mm-hmm. whenever they figure out the Dave Batista situation, but whatever, that's a different topic. Let's get to the next one anyway. Okay, so uh, topic number two, technically number two, because we this was a breaking <laughs> news story. Uh, Jar- Jarrett Leto's Morbius movie is reported to be finished production in May. I don't know jack jiggly shit about Morbius. I didn't get time to do research, but I just know he's a vampire. I'm pretty sure that he's a villain to, like, you want it, you want, some... You want to get some I'm knowledge? Just, you want me to drop you some knowledge? Yeah, drop me some knowledge. All right, all right, here. This is this is why I'm here. Uh, so <laughs> you're right. He's a, So he's a scientist that uh, tries to cure his this rare blood disorder he has with vampire bat DNA. And uh, in all Marvel properties, something goes wrong, and he uh, ends up changing himself into Morbius, the living vampire. 
uh, yes, he becomes a foe of the amazing Spider-Man. But then... I knew I recognized the name. Yes, but right. then uh, he becomes an anti-hero to fight off actual vampires, sometimes with Blade, sometimes with Black Cat, but uh, sometimes he goes full, like, man-bat. Uh, but yeah, uh, he has to he has to drink people's plasma, yeah, um, from their bodies. So that's why he gets the name the Living Vampire. Uh, I I like this character. I think you could definitely make uh, like an anti hero story. I guess like, but it's from the people who did Venom. So I don't know how hyped I am for this story. Uh, <laughs> like like I you can do a good story a small like centralized story but i'd rather it be in the mcu i'd rather it be by the people who have blade as well so we could get an epic team up uh because that was my favorite part of the the spider-man cartoon you know what would be a dope ass team up i've been talking about this one team up for a while but if you add morbius to the team dude it's gonna be the most kick-ass team up ever morbius blade and then ghost rider Mm-hmm. that'd be really cool uh, uh you make them like the thunderbolts or i don't know any other uh just i don't know you gotta make them like Do- a supernatural uh, name yeah like i think there is a team like that um i know because i definitely know the team um uh because there's the game ultimate alliance i play i had ghost rider dope is dope. um blade yeah blade i forget who else and then I had Doctor Strange, and it was uh the, they didn't give me the the exact team name, but they just said Supernatural. So mm-hmm. I figured that um they had to have teamed up at least once. So uh, obviously we're not gonna get Doctor Strange in that. They're gonna uh, probably replace it with a like a lesser known hero. Um, it's like Morbius. Morbius is pretty unknown to the uh to the uh, common eye. Mm-hmm. So um you could probably get someone like that who's pretty unknown who's also deals with the supernatural. Um, th- I think that could be a really good movie. It'd like, make it a kind of make a second MCU, if you will. Kevin Feige shouldn't get involved with that. Like, I love the dude. He's he's our Lord and Savior. He made our freaking MCU as popular as it is today. He made the Avengers. He made Infinity War possible. But I feel like if you do like a shared cinematic universe, but with the supernatural, um, you got to go with a darker tone. Maybe go borderline rated r you don't don't have to i'm not gonna be one of those people like, if it's not rated r it's not good now, if you go borderline rated r and go really dark and gritty i feel like you can have a great great cinematic universe that's not connected to the mcu because i feel like that'd be really effing dope and just like imagine it just like you got the mcu on one hand and then you got the supernatural uh shared shared universe so the s the SCU or whatever, mm-hmm. like I feel like that would be freaking dope, dude. I, oh my, I'm getting hyped just thinking about it, dude. Like just like Ghost Rider, Blade, one of my favorite uh, heroes growing up as a kid, and then Morbius, and then God knows who else, and just the kicking ass, dude. It's dope ass team up. I've been going all, on for a little bit, so Nico, if you have any final <laughs> thoughts, uh, you can go ahead. <laughs> uh, I feel, um, I think that is really cool for sure. Uh, if you want an epic team up between Morbius and Blade, watch the Spider-Man cartoon from the '90s. Uh, that's definitely where I was first introduced to him. I have a comic where uh, Spider-Man fights him, and the, I don't like uh, that art in that comic is really fucking good. So he definitely looks more make Morbius look like a badass. So there is a good story here. You definitely could make a movie. I don't trust Sony. <laughs> it's probably not going to be any good. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they're going to uh, make like an anti-hero team between him and Venom. Venom eats people <laughs> or eats bad people. And then I guess uh, whatever his blood drips out of his mouth, I guess Morbius can, can lick that all up. Uh, oh whatever, God, I whatever. About that, dude. I I just feel oh, like this God. is one of those things where, um, like Venom, like we're barely hearing hearing anything about it. Uh, it's it's coming in real late. Sounds like they're gonna rush it. Not to not, like I'm not hyped right. for this. So whatever. If it happens, really cool. All right, then you do a good job. I'd rather be pleasantly surprised than disappointed. Yeah, good point. And I totally forgot about that. That um. That this like I remember them talking about Venom being like the hero, and then he was going to team up with Morbius to fight Craven. And there's, there's a lot of bullshit theories out there. The only theory that I liked about this Venom universe is um, 
if you're not gonna have Spider-Man in that universe, dope, whatever, who cares? Um, you imagine Craven uh, fighting uh, Venom because he's the ultimate prey. Because he Craven fights Spider-Man because he's the ultimate prey. Uh, so just imagine just change that to Venom. That would be pretty dope. But like I totally forgot that Morbius was even in talks to be in the same universe as Venom. If that's the case, I'm going to go into my just bathroom and never leave. I'm just going to cry and just fill up my bathtub with my tears, take a bath in it, rethink life, go outside, and I'll come out a whole new man. Don't make it part of Venom, dude. Oh, Venom was fun. It was fun. The first two acts were fine. And I mean fine. Borderline fine. I had some fun. There were some funny moments. There was enough entertainment there to be had. But, like, let's like, – we, we should all agree. That final fight scene was probably the worst final fight I've ever seen in my entire life. It was pretty fucking, I won't say the worst ever, but like it's up there with one of the worst final fights ever. You, It's black outside. It's basically midnight with a CGI black hero with a CGI white character fighting each other and it, the, the quick cuts, the close-ups, you kind of see shit what's going on. Whatever. I, you, damn it, Nico, you had to bring up Venom. <laughs> Uh, oh I'm sorry. God. I'm sorry. I hope, was, not, I hope they're not connected. I'm sorry. Was Riot a cloud? No. <laughs> Sounds like I've seen worse then. Oh, uh, it's a good point. <laughs> I don't, I don't, who, what the fuck were Th- Fox thinking with that? Let's make Gal- I mean, I can understand. It's hard to kind of really like adapt Galactus to the big screen, but like that's your response. That and a lot of people forget, like going with the whole cloud thing. People tend to think Dormammu was a cosmic cloud. No, no, he's not a cosmic cloud. He's not. Like, if you look at the comics or any of the fighting games that, with uh, Marvel versus Capcom, Dormammu does not look like that. Uh, I, it didn't bother me, but people tend to wave their fingers like, Damn it, Galactus doesn't look like that! I'm like, well, Dormammu didn't look like that either. But, I mean, at least, you know, Dormammu actually looked good. No, and but, actually had a face, uh, had, a, had a personality, and, and then you know you had Galactus that was literally a diarrhea cloud that was inserting its ass over the planet. It was like Earth was literally an anal bead going into its ass. Kind of tough. Well, okay, well, wow, that's some imagery you got there. Uh, but uh, <laughs> no, they said that that's just how um, Doctor Strange perceived him in that realm. There was there was so much that uh, that wasn't like his final form or whatever. So that's just uh, it was actually Benedict Cumberbatch did like the motion capture. So it, Dormammu mm-hmm. basically just uh, like copied him. So like when he comes, whenever he does come to the physical world or whatever, it, it'll they'll they they just all they did was buy themselves some time, <laughs> really. Yeah, honestly, like Doctor Strange two is confirmed. Thank God, I really loved the first Doctor Strange movie a lot. I'm not too happy what they did with uh, Doctor Strange's main villain. They kind of made him a whining bitch. Uh, so maybe they treat him like an afterthought mm-hmm. and then like make Dormammu come back. And um, come to I don't want to see Dormammu kind of – I don't want to see Dormammu play the villain. I forget the guy's name already. Um, uh, what the, what's the guy's name? The one that's like the bill comes due. Uh, that guy. Uh, that Baron Mordo. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I hope Dormammu doesn't manipulate him to bring him back because that, that that's basically retreading the first movie. But um, Dormammu and Baron Mordo some... work together all the time, so I w- yeah. I wouldn't bet against that being the the next storyline. I hope it's yeah. More I just of hope just it's not like, manipulation. Yeah, yeah. I know. I hope he does it of his own free will, and I hope that yeah. it's. I I would say do second movie Baron Mordo, and then maybe like a team up with Dormammu at the end. I would love to see Mephisto. Yeah. Uh, in there somewhere, the mm-hmm. devil of the MCU, yeah. which we already kind of got with, or there was a hint to him in Ghost Rider or with Ghost Rider and Agents of Shield. So I'd rather see him, I guess, in Ghost Rider, but it would be really cool to see him on screen. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, next topic, because you know we're doing that thing again. <laughs> um, yeah. um, oh, I'm doing that thing again. No, it's my fault. <laughs> it's my fault for bringing up all these terrible movies. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next topic. Uh, this is something I didn't even know was coming out until recently. My mom's like, hey, there's this movie called Reign of Superman. You want to watch it? I'm like, that sounds like a cheesy-ass documentary trying to cash in on the name Superman. 
And then she's like, no, no, it's a superhero movie. And I'm like, I never heard of it. Well, then I look up, no, Reign of Superman is the direct sequel to uh, the uh, Death of Superman, uh, which is incredible because I know, if you guys don't know, the recent uh, DC animated films are all connected. And um, so the movie is going to be having its premiere, uh, when is it, like uh, this weekend? Yeah, this weekend. And um, I'm really excited to see it. Uh, it's the reign of the Superman, and um, I'm really excited to see it. I've been liking, for the most part, I've been liking uh, a lot of this animated universe that they've been uh, given up. It kind of sucks because, you know, that's the best that they can do. They can do it on the uh, animated uh, screen, but they can't do it on the big screen. Whatever. We're not going to get into it because then that's going to be another hour of us just bit bullshitting on DC. <laughs> but... I mean, I'm not going to lie, though. Like every other franchise, they had a couple hit or misses. Uh, I know Teen Titans, the Judas Contract. I, I didn't hate it. I didn't like it, though. The only thing that made me resonate towards it was the personalities of the characters, but the the writing was kind of lazy and stuff like that. But um, there's a couple hit or misses in there, but for the most part, I really love the, uh, the storylines. I liked uh, Justice League War. Um, War is just basically a nonstop action ride of just... Let's fuck shit up, dude. And it's probably the coolest shit we're going to see with Doomsday in an animated stuff, uh, animated movie, because, like, they were, they basically blinded the dude, and that was pretty dope. And I just, I can't wait to see where this universe goes, and I hope they do a lot more down the line. Uh, I just wish they would, like, kind, kind of come out faster, but I understand why they're not coming out faster, because quality or quantity, I want to pick quality. So, uh, take your time. But uh, can you move it up a little faster? Because I, I can see you guys are alluding to something much, much deeper, and much, much stronger. I, I just, I'm really excited. Uh, Nico, what are your thoughts? Um, this is actually a, like a storyline that I have, or that uh, it's in my house. It's not mine. Uh, it belongs to my girlfriend. Uh, she read Reign of the Supermen. Uh, it's a storyline I'm very familiar with. Uh, it comes at, like you said, it comes after the death of Superman. Uh, there's a bunch of, there's a super or Superman obviously leaves a huge void, and there's multiple Supermen uh, trying uh, to to take over. Like I'm, it, this whole movie is I'm Dirty Dan. <laughs> 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 this is I'm Dirty Dan the movie. Uh, <laughs> There That's is awesome. there is cyborg Superman. There is Superboy. There's a there's a Superwoman. There yeah. There's a, there's a bunch of people vying for to be uh, Clark Kent's replacement. And uh, some people think they are him. And uh, I'm not gonna say what happens. You know, watch the movie. Uh, I like Superboy in this movie. Cyborg Superman is a very um, very interesting character. So I will look forward to seeing that. Uh, I don't know. This isn't something I'm like, oh, really? Like super excited to see. Not just because like, um, not because like I think it's a dumb story. Obviously, I think I respect the story and stuff like that. It's just like if it's on Netflix, I'll watch it. Uh, like you said, Justice League War, great, uh, great like hour, hour and a half, whatever it is. Um, a great like introduction to the Justice League if you've never seen anything before. Uh, so, uh, like, uh, one of my favorite comic book anythings is an animated one. It was, I think it was right before Justice League War, or right after it was the Flashpoint Paradox. Uh, that's my shit right there. Um, so, like you said, mm-hmm. killing it in animated. Uh, this should be fine. Uh, the last animated movie I think I've seen is The Killing Joke. And a lot of people had a really big problem with that. I had a problem with everything that wasn't the killing joke. There's like a half hour that had nothing or that wasn't in the comic. They put it in there. It's really weird. Uh, but like I said, more than likely quality from the animation. So it should should be good. Did you see the uh, the death of Superman? Obviously, they made an animated movie back in like early 2000s. Mm-hmm. That's one of my first DC animated movies I watched. I loved it. Mm-hmm. So when I I saw that they uh, released a, a reboot, if you will, but mm-hmm. like the continuation of the story, um, I got nervous because I was like, oh my God, no, it's going to, is this going to be like, you know, just trying to be that movie from back then. And uh, I personally loved it because like the one thing that this did that BVS could not do and yes, I'm going to bring it up because, you know, it's kind of connected. It's some way. It's the same universe. Just one's animated. One's not. 
Okay. We grew to know Superman. We cared for the guy. We saw his interactions with all the other uh, heroes and stuff like that. And just you see him actually get beat to a bloody pulp. Like you actually – like the fight – like the like it takes like 15, 20 minutes to get to the action. People are like, oh, that's a long time. <laughs> no, the movie's like an hour, 15 minutes. So when you really think about it, that's nothing. That's nothing. And then it's like literally 45, 50 minutes of like the Justice League getting their asses kicked. And then Superman gets involved. And then it's a half hour of him getting his ass kicked. It's a really effed up movie because of like how like how brutal it is. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's way more brutal than the first movie. Uh, did you see it and what are your thoughts? Uh, I did not see the new one. Definitely saw the old one. And I thought that was pretty like hard to watch, especially as a child. Like anytime Superman got beat up, uh, I felt like sick to my stomach because he was one of my favorite characters for sure. Like in um, uh, Superman Returns, that part where they're like drowning him in puddles and like on the kryptonite yeah. island, like that, like it makes me tense up. Like I know some people don't like yeah. that movie, but I don't give a shit. Like that was I love I love that movie. Yeah, it doesn't have a great like Superman doesn't throw a single punch, but I think they got the they got the kind of tone of the Superman I really like. I really prefer. Um, but yeah, there's that part makes me sick. Same thing with the cartoon, like when he was getting beat up by Doomsday. Uh, you're making me want to watch the new one because I do. I'm very big fan of how brutal these animation uh, uh, movies can be. I feel like oh. may maybe they're not meant for kids, but guess what? Like I feel like they trust. Like even if a kid watched it, they trust them to get what's going on, and I really appreciate that, especially with like Flashpoint. Um, Oh yeah, one hundred percent. All the, the the majority of these um, uh, DVD movies, m the majority of them are PG thirteen, and this one's no exception. Mm -hmm. The Death of Superman's no exception. That's I can like honestly like it was pretty brutal. It was like watching Daredevil season one. It was like like just imagine like Daredevil getting like quartered by like Kingpin and like fifteen other guys. That's just one doomsday, and then Daredevil <laughs> Superman. He's, like, literally getting demolished. It was really brutal. Like, I'm a grown-ass man. Superman is not my top three favorite superheroes of all time, but I still love the character. Even I was like, yikes, brother, you want to take it easy? <laughs> like, it was like, oh, my God. Like I said, it's a long-ass fight scene, and you feel exhausted afterwards because mm -hmm. it's just one giant action scene, and... It's definitely worth the watch. Um, go to your local store that ever <laughs> whatever sells it, and then freaking get. It. I think it's like fifteen, maybe ten, fifteen bucks, maybe at most twenty. Worst comes to worst, I'm mailing you my copy. Because, <laughs> uh, it's, like it, it's gonna happen. It's like you gotta freaking watch it. But um, yeah, like you're right though. I like how mature these movies are, and they don't feel like they have to kind of tip, like pull it back. This is what I like um, about the animated stuff and what I hate about the live-action stuff. The a animated stuff is very serious, very dark and stuff like that. But you know what's crazy? The characters actually learn, get this, to smile. <laughs> like, there's some light going on. There's laughter. There's character. There's We care. They're not rushing to anything. Like For the longest time, I didn't even know these movies were connected. Everything from Flashpoint on are connected. I didn't even know they were connected until like, like I think like six, seven months ago. I was like, huh. I think they just referenced another movie, and I, I watched that movie. And I was like, oh shit, brother, they're connected. Um, so they're not clearly in a rush for anything. They're just sitting there like, hey, let's make some good stories, uh, and we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. And they're clearly taking their time. Because they're not in a rush to do anything big like Crisis on Infinite Earths or anything like that. They're sitting there they're like, okay, if we're going to do anything grand, let's build up to it. Um, and I think they're doing everything all right so far. So, um, yeah, we'll end that topic right there. All right, can I say one more? Justice? Can I say one more thing? Oh, yeah. Yo, yo, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so if you guys are 
curious to see uh, what the Reign of Superman storyline is. Uh, Max Landis's uh, YouTube channel, the guy who wrote like Chronicle and American Ultra, uh, it's called like Up to My Knees is his channel's name. But he does this great like reenactment of the Reign of the Superman, like Death of Superman into the Reign of Superman storyline. So all he does is like sit in a chair and just like re- like from his knowledge, just like just like spout what happens, like walk you through the storyline. And then there's like different actors reenacting it. Like I think cyborg Superman is played by Elijah Wood. Like, it's just like, it's this really fun thing to watch. Yeah. Uh, it's really, it's it's, so cool. It's, and it's all like, like shittily done. Like he just like has tinfoil on like half of his face. (laughs) (laughs) Like it's, it's definitely like, like it made me really want to get more into that kind of storyline. Uh, and he does this other one. That's just like my wrestling side. It's called Wrestling Isn't Wrestling. He does the same kind of thing where he just talks about like Triple H from like the early 90s until like now. So like uh, it, I don't think he does. He doesn't really do YouTube anymore, but that's definitely like worth a watch. And he also has one where like he also has a video like why Clark Kent's like the more important part of Superman and like what he would have done for the death of Superman, stuff like that. Definitely worth checking out. Okay, well, uh, yeah, we'll go to the next topic. Um, this kind of uh, upset me uh, a little bit, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I got word on this yesterday. So, if you guys have been living under rock, they uh, were making Star Trek movies. Like, back in, I think the first one was 2011, and then they had one in 2013 or 2014, which was Star Trek Into Darkness. And then I think in 2017, if I'm not mistaken, it was Star Trek... Beyond, which I freaking loved. I loved Star Trek Beyond. And they were going to make a fourth one. It was going to involve uh, Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth. If you guys don't know, Chris Pine is the main character from uh, the Star Trek movies. And Chris Hemsworth, Thor himself, was uh, his dad. So they were going to have like some time travel involved and stuff like that. Which the Star Trek stuff was always uh, kind of about like time travel and shit like that. Um, I was excited to see that. And they canceled it for multiple, multiple, multiple reasons. Um, the biggest reason was because um, the movies are kind of dropping down in profit. I know, like, from the second one to the third one, I think they Ash dropped movies. down in, like, 30... Yeah, they dropped in, like, uh, 40, 50 million dollars. Like, they, I think they only made, like, a couple million. Like, I think they made roughly, like, 50 million uh, I'm just I'm throwing out numbers. I, I just know it didn't make a lot of money, even though it was the most well received Star Trek movie of the series, um, which kind of breaks my heart. But uh, whatever. And uh, so the fourth one was supposed to be the saving grace, but since of that uh, paid that that kind of pay dip, if you will, um, they told Chris Hemsworth and Chris Pine that they needed to take a a pay cut, and. Um, for obvious reasons, it's not like the studio being slimy or anything like that because the, the projections are going downward, so they are trying to not lose money. Because if you if a studio loses money, people will be like, well, guess what? They're like they're billionaires. Not really, because guess what? If the studio loses money, like 500 people are losing their jobs. So yeah, let, let, let's not do that. So they were trying to be responsible, but reasonably, Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth were like, no, we already had a deal. We had a deal. Uh, we wrote the contracts out. We're not re- we're not renegotiating. We're busy people. We're busy guys. One's in the MCU. One's in the DC uh, DC Worlds or whatever the fuck it's called now. Worlds whatever. of DC. Uh, it's fucking stupid. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, but they're busy guys. They're busy people. They can't uh, spend more time on a movie that they already negotiated. Take more. Uh, take a pay cut. And it's just like they don't have to do shit. It's a job. They don't have to do anything. So it's kind of one of those situations where no one's in the wrong. One one company doesn't want to fire half their fucking uh, industry, and the other people are like, "Well, we're busy. We got the MCU in one hand. We got the worlds of DC in the other one." So they're it's it's reasonable, but it just kind of breaks my heart, especially because they ended off on such a high note. I just wanted to kind of continue. I just wanted to see more of the the series because they the third one was so funny. Have you have you seen it? Have you seen Star Trek Beyond? Yeah, I've seen all three of them. Uh, what are your thoughts on this situation? Uh, well, I think it was kind of like a tall task. Not like 
uh, money wise, but I didn't even take that into consideration. But like uh, story wise, going back in time, you know, time travel is always messy. Uh, but you're, that's how, exactly how they started. The first one in 2009 uh, is there was a, the Romulans uh, came back in time, and like uh, there was a lot of people. There there was a little uh, fan uh, backlash because you know they're like, oh, like they were supposed to be like basically the same characters, but now there's this time difference where. Uh, like uh, uh J- james kirk's dad dies and right right away so that like delays his time or whatever but i think ultimately it the the story was very much improved because of it um so i think it'd be really cool to see two a-listers like chris pine and chris hemsworth uh on screen together would have been really cool um don't know I, like i said story-wise i think it'd be kind of complicated to do but uh i would have it would have been something that got me who didn't go see Star Trek Beyond in the theater, but I just watched it on home video or home video, watched it on Redbox. <laughs> uh, well, talking like I'm going to fucking Blockbuster or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the days. Uh, but uh, like, so I was hyped for it. Like I saw Star Trek in the darkness and leaving that theater, I told my dad, J.J. Abrams can have Star Wars. I trust him. So... Like, that's yeah, how much but- I like that movie. So, and I would, I'm moderate, I was moderately excited for this movie. Um, I guess it makes sense why they would cancel it because, you know, people like to make movies in threes uh, where it left off and where most Star Trek movies, where all the Star Trek movies left off. There was always like, yeah, you could definitely trek some more stars. Um, there's always more to explore. There's always new, new, new aliens you can make and stuff like that. So it's kind of sucks, but, uh, uh, I'm, I, those actors are still working. Hope they do a bunch of cool stuff and I never say never, you know, not, a, not a Justin Bieber plug. Uh, <laughs> cause I don't know, but you like uh, that. <laughs> oh my gosh. So <laughs> stupid. Like, <laughs> but, uh, oh my God. <laughs> but, uh, I think there's, this is something that can get traction again, especially like nowadays where we see reboots and stuff like that. I think that this is a world worth uh, checking out again. Uh, what's crazy. Cause you know how negative I and critical I tend to be. Uh, I'm with you with the Star Trek Into Darkness. It was easily the worst received film in the in the trilogy. Mm-hmm. I was like, I like this movie a lot. I'm like, what what are you people complaining about? They're like, it's not like the original con. It's not like this. It's not like that. I'm like, are you okay? Listen, they're clearly going to make changes to the character. You know why? Because the original character was back from, like, what, the 70s? They're clearly going to make some changes when the movie's coming out 2013 or 2014. They're going to make some changes because guess what? If you keep it exactly like the one from the 70s, you're just going to be like, that's not like the original... Why is it like the original con? They're just they're just copying. Ah, like, yeah, whatever. I, I really had a lot of fun with it. And um, I had a lot of fun. It was a really enjoyable. Uh, I had a blast. It was. People are complaining that it's too action packed for a Star Trek movie. I'm like, yet again, it's with the time. Welcome to the 21st century. I know exactly, right? Like, it's a space adventure movie. Like, no one's gonna spend, especially in this time period, like where I'm from. You spend 15 bucks to watch a movie. No one in the right effing mind, like to make money, is going to spend fifteen bucks to watch people sit down, scan plants, and say, "Hey, look, a hostile alien race. Let's talk this out." Two hours later, they talk it out. It's like the end of the movie. Of course, there's going to be conflict. Of course, there's going to be action. But they're like, "There's too much." Whatever, whatever. Fuck you guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was a good movie. It was a great. It was a great script. Great, great acting. Great, great visual effects. Holy shit! When that freaking ship, cl- like, crashed into the planet and stuff like that, I was like, beautiful, beautiful CGI, beautiful effects. And you're right. When I saw that movie, I was like, man, it sucks. He's not coming back for the third one. But my god, am I excited for Star Wars? Like, I'm like at that time, I was never a huge Star Wars fan. I, I barely watched the. Uh, the original, so I saw the prequel. Uh, <laughs> I saw the saw the prequels twice, maybe because you know my my family was a huge fan of the prequels. Kind of tough, by the way. Um, That's fine. I love the prequels. They're great yeah. quality. quality yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're they're great for the memes. They're great for the memes. That's what I love them on all levels. 
Oh, whatever, whatever. Great <laughs> acting, by the way, from the well, I like Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> but so, and I never watched the Clone Wars animated stuff. Um, then when that movie came out, uh, I was I actually really enjoyed it, and I was like, kind of, kind of got me into Star Wars, and then that's what made me consider watching the Clone Wars. Uh, I didn't really watch the Clone Wars until after the Last Jedi, and no, the Last Jedi wasn't the push that made me go into it. No, he loved the Last the Jedi. Toxic. Yeah, I, I, we're not going to talk about it, by the way. <laughs> but no, no, no. Um, I remember I was talking to my buddy, the Star Wars fan, who's got the tats about Star Wars and shit like that. Um, he's like, "Listen, I know you didn't like the Last Jedi. Neither did I. I was kind of mad about it." He's like, "But hey." Uh, Watch the series, and he kind of forced my hand. He's like, he kept like every single hour of every single day. He asked me, "Hey, did you watch the the Clone Wars? Hey, did you watch the Clone Wars?" I'm like, "Fine, I'll watch it." I told him the first season was like really slow to me, but he's like, "But hey, it's still good, right? It's slow. It's gonna pick up after season three. I, I stuck it through, and the show was insane. I freaking loved it, and that kind of made me a, like a Star Wars fan. And um, yeah, so I went on a bit of a tangent, but yeah. Um, J.J. Abrams kind of helped me uh, get into Star Wars, so he's kind of like a hero to me for that, and he made Star Trek cool again, because let's be honest, before the, the 2011 Star Trek movie, who was really talking about what's better, Star Wars or Star Trek? No one. If you say that, you, oh, I knew a lot of people could argue about that, shut the fuck up. You're talking about it from the 70s. That shit's outdated. No, Star Trek was never really the most popular series. I mean, they made a fuck ton of movies, but... At the end of the day, Star Wars was the w- more popular movie, and uh, kind of J.J. Abrams kind of like reignited the franchise again. And you're right, I just love him for that. Uh, anything else you want to talk about before we go to our questions on Twitter? I think I think there's a good argument for Star Trek versus Star Wars, but uh, I'm on the Star Wars side, so I don't really I don't care to defend them. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, the first they had the first ever interracial kiss on TV, so they got that. Uh, but oh, uh, that. Star Trek Into Darkness, uh, I never saw Wrath of Khan, so guess what? That movie was good to me. I didn't see that one, so <laughs> that was my version of Wrath of Khan. So suck it. Uh, when uh, I just yeah. I was always expecting the Klingons to be like the villain in one of these movies, and they never were. Uh, they showed up, yeah, because they're, like, they're, they're, the like, they're like the most popular villain, right? Yeah, I, I never watched the Star Trek movies. Not Star Trek movies. Uh, no, yeah, the, I never watched the movies growing up because there's like twelve of them. There's like a fuck ton of them. Mm-hmm. I never watched it. I watched bits and pieces here and there, but um. If I saw, like, uh, I'm talking about when I was really young, when I was, like, mm-hmm. 8, 9, or 10, I, I saw Spongebob was on. I'm like, oh, look, Spongebob's on. Let me pop that bitch in. I'm Still watching Dan. Spongebob, by the way. Yeah, I'm Dirty Dan. Dude, let me tell you something. Getting sidetracked a little bit, but uh, I told you I, I'm a babysitter. Uh, every morning I put on Spongebob uh, for the kid. For you. And... Yeah, for me, one hundred percent. No, but like every time, <laughs> it, 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 no, every time an original episode comes on, I get so excited. And I watched. Uh, it was season one, episode three, and it's when uh, Mrs. P- no, season two, episode three. Um, Mrs. Puff gives uh, SpongeBob his license, <laughs> and she, reg- she 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 regrets it, right? Classic. She reg- yeah, so uh, she tries to steal his boat. But she's like, let me see if I still remember how to do this. She go, opens up her purse. Literally, if you look at the episode, you could say, no, it was a balloon. She pulls out a fucking condom out of her out of her purse and blows a balloon like out of it. And it makes a balloon out of, out of it. I'm like, that was 100% a condom. How did they get past that? How did they do it? I started pissing myself laughing. The kid who's seven years old is like, why, why are you laughing? She made a balloon animal. I'm like... So pure, so innocent. It's but a good. It's a good. That, uh, it's a good uh, trait to have. You know, it's a good skill. Balloon animals. Are. Yeah, ex- <laughs> yeah. Balloon animals are classic, right? Mm-hmm. But like, great, great stuff from the original stuff. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah. We're gonna. I'm getting a little sidetracked to you again. But I, I just had to bring that up because that literally happened this morning, and I it was cracking up. It was the best <laughs> shit ever. Um, but yeah, so that is it, guys. We're gonna go into the Twitter. Uh, stuff. So, 
Uh, we're going with the first question from Kinnear Reviews. Make sure you subscribe to his channel because he will be uploading podcasts soon. So, uh, Hell yeah. Uh, um, link is not going to be in the description because I'm way too lazy. But, like, hey, just look up K-I-N-N-E-A-R Reviews. Uh, go also, baby boy. also he will be on the next episode of New World Nation. Ooh, nice. Yeah, I was actually thinking about bringing him on the next podcast. But, hey, can't wait to see that stuff. So um, his question is, if you could choose a character, superhero or not, to get a film in the art and style of Into the Spider-Verse, who would you choose and why? I know mine. I, it was kind of crazy because, like, um, I was trying to think of other options. But, like, the instant I read that question, I thought of one hero and one hero only. Never changed it. Daredevil. Sweet. Um, yeah, I don't know why, but I just feel like that animation style would work so well with him. And, um... It's kind of it's kind of sucks though because I know like Kingpin's not his only Daredevil's villain, but like I would have liked to have seen uh, Kingpin in that as well. But um, he's got plenty of other villains, and I just feel like he's got some villains involved that can be like really absurd and stuff like that. Like I could see Bullseye being like faithful to the comics and just like imagine seeing Bullseye in his actual costume, not with like you know a scar on his head and like stuff like that from two thousand three and. Literally, in the, I loved Bullseye in um, uh, the Netflix uh, mm-hmm. season three of Daredevil. He's, he's great. But like, I didn't, I didn't want to see, obviously, the faithful adaptation to his costume because that would not look good in a, da- a Daredevil show. Because especially as dark as that show was, so I wasn't expecting anything. But I was expecting a suit of sorts. But the entire time he was in the da- in the Daredevil suit, so that kind of disappointed me on that end. But. So I just thought, like, imagine him being in the actual classic suit, get a couple more Daredevil villains in, in there and stuff like that. I feel like it could really, really work. And um, especially, like, um, how they did the spider sense and everything like that, they introduced a new way to kind of really show that. And I feel like having that kind of animation style will definitely benefit Daredevil, especially with his senses. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do with that. And... Uh, just because, like, we've seen different stuff with his senses, like in the 2003 movie, everything's blue for some reason, whatever. Um, and then in the Netflix movies, we got that stuff. I feel like this would bring a fresh new idea to uh, the Daredevil style of like his senses, the way we see things. It makes things a lot more clearer because a lot of people still don't really know how the spider sense really works. And I feel like Into the Spider Verse really captivated what it was like to have spider senses, like. Uh, I just thought that was really clever, so I feel like Daredevil would definitely benefit from that. Um, mm. How about you? Yeah, I think you're right how you said Spider Sense. Like Daredevil's, like the way he sees would be really cool in that art style. Um, so what I was thinking, I thought of one like non superhero person. I don't know why, but like Scott Pilgrim versus the World would be kind of cool. Like the actual mm-hmm. like like make it in the kind of comic book style because uh, it's it's a comic book. It's pretty cool. Uh, that's just off the top of my head. And um, for a superhero uh, comic book character, I would really love, it's kind of like, it's a lot similar to Miles Morales' as Spider-Man, but Batman be- Beyond have it surrounded, uh, or have it uh, uh, be around Terry McGinnis. I think he's a, he's a great character. Uh, I think there's a lot of cool things you could do. Uh, I wouldn't wa- want it to be like I, I wouldn't want to have too many similarities to End of the Spider Verse. So I wouldn't have him like look up different versions of Batman. Batman Beyond the TV show is so good. Um, he's been in comics now, really good. But I think uh, you could do it where he interacts with the Justice League. So Superman's still there, and uh, uh, he just has a little bit of gray. And I think that'd be a really cool story to tell. And I love his little his his weird future uh, world. Dude, I never once thought about that. You are absolutely right. Like, that is such a good idea. Especially, like, the one thing that I definitely loved about the Spider-Verse animation style is that you can get away with the absurd Mm -hmm, uh, designs of the heroes and villains. Like, before Into the Spider-Verse came out and the trailers and stuff like that, I never once thought we were going to get the true look of Goblin. I mean, like, I like. Why would you? I mean, like, he's literally a fucking monster with a uh, like a purple hat on his head. Mm-hmm. Like, like you, you're not gonna expect that. But like, I just thought I was never gonna see that in a live action form or like on the big screen in general. Um, and we saw that on the big screen, and they just went balls to the wall. So imagine seeing some of the Batman villains 
like mm-hmm. fully faithful, like seeing Bane and like Scarecrow, all these other villains, like um, uh, uh, Solomon Grundy. I was trying to think of the name, but Solomon Grundy. That would be a really cool villain to see in uh, Batman Beyond and stuff like that. Just get some of the classic Batman villains with obviously, I know Batman Beyond has his own villains as well, but just like get some of the traditional Batman villains and get some of the, like his own villains as well. Spice things up a little bit. Dude, that's a great idea. I never even thought of that. Like, I don't know why, but my mind was so hell bent on Marvel. I thought the only time, every time I think of DC, I just think of the original uh, seven Justice mm. League members with the occasional like you know sub hero. I, I thought of Blue Beetle, but like you know, eh, he, he wouldn't really benefit too much. Mm-hmm. I mean, he could do a couple cool things in there, but like Batman Beyond is definitely a good option. Yeah, especially uh, with like his last... little rocket boots and stuff like that. Oh, dude. Oh uh, yeah, dude, totally. Um, anything else you want to add before we go to the, the next and final question? Ah, uh, I I had something and I think I lost. Oh, the the little oil. Um, his villain, the one that's just like Batman Beyond's villain in the show. She was like oil. I want to, I want to say like Mystique, but obviously that's not it. But like, it's like this weird oily villain. So like that can take any shape. So I think that would be really cool to see in that animation style. Last thing. Oh, uh, so, uh, sidetrack really quick. Uh, I know I do that. I'm doing a lot of that. Even though I told, I, I was said I was going to be the one <laughs> keeping us on track. But um, kind of tough, by the way. We're doing but, a lot um, better than last time. A lot better. <laughs> See, we're, we're just reaching the hour mark. We're not on hour, an hour and 15 minutes right now. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're doing good. Um, but, um, so I was doing some, like, uh, scrolling on Twitter. And someone posted a meme. And it just blew my fucking mind. So, um, it was a post about Catwoman, the movie. So you're trying to tell me the villain of that movie was supposed to be Clayface? Ah, uh, that'd have been dope. What? No, no, that no, that's what the villain is supposed to be. Oh. Like that, what they brought, what they brought was Clayface. I I haven't seen enough of that movie. The only part I've seen is the basketball part. Oh, great scene, by the way. It's so fucking stupid. No, but like, what? and I saw that it just pissed me off even more. I didn't think I could hate the movie even more, but for some reason, they managed to fuck me over some more. Wow, that pissed me off. I'm like, wait, because she puts, ma- like, basically, uh, the makeup, she's, like, the main villain is a makeup lady, whatever. Um, it, She puts on makeup, and um, it keeps her looking young. And uh, gives her superhuman strength and agility, whatever. But um, it starts affecting her and, and shit like that. And that's the character. Yeah. And then I, I, and then they were like, "That, that's hey guys, that's Clayface, by the way." I'm like, "What? Just because you put makeup on, it's not even close to Clayface. What do you mean? Like that actually pissed me off. And like it's still kind of like I like there's still kind of a fire in my stomach right now. I just need to need to go whoever wrote that movie and actually bitch slap them. Get, just get a couple one one left right left right in there. Just like really fuck them up because that." Is literally the worst fan service I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> kind of tough, by the way. But uh, yeah, I, I want to th- hear your thoughts. <laughs> I thought on Clayface, the Batman Brandon has uh, this brilliant idea of a Batman solo movie uh, where he's like, it's a murder or it's a mystery. He's, he has to be the world's greatest detective. And uh, vil- the main villain would be revealed at the end to be Clayface. It's like you're doing this. It's like this crazy mystery or whatever. And like now the like each um, bad guy or he wears a different face like every time. But he's in like a bunch of different scenes in the movie. But like you don't know because Clayface can like sh- basically shape shift and stuff like that. The way he explained it to me was really freaking cool. I haven't seen Catwoman and I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> but- like yeah like um it's crazy that we are like god knows how many batman movies in we're like i think there's like almost 15 now like uh feature film batman movies there's like almost 15 not one time was there really a investigation detective batman movie it was always 
hey, look at the news. Like, people can praise <laughs> all the fuck they want with the Dark Knight trilogy. Where is there's the two things that I've re- there's two not okay three things that really just just jerk my chain. One was the voice, a little much by the way. Whatever, okay. I'll I'll let that slide. The the choreography, I think we can all agree. But there's gonna be some of the you know the Dark Knight trilogy uh, you know cult members out there be like this is the best movie ever. It's so flawless. The choreography was kind of crap. We I can was all, a boy. I think the most of us. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm a bad. Fucking love that so much, dude. <laughs> but like, um, yeah. And then that just it just irks my chain. But whatever. Um, the final one is the fact that he never detects. Everything he learns is from the fucking news. <laughs> like, I, uh, that's I, not the girl's greatest detective. I got a fingerprint from a bullet casing <laughs> that I made. Like, Alfred. No, yeah. <laughs> if you guys don't know what he's referencing, it's like from like mid to like 2000, like it was like early 2010, like somewhere around there, Comedy Central released a shit ton. No, it had to be in 2012 because like, yeah, it was around 2012. They started releasing like basically knockoffs of the Dark Knight trilogy and just kind of ripping on the Batman on every single way they can with the voice uh, like kind of making Batman a total dumbass. It was it was incredible. If you guys have not seen it, definitely look up uh, Dark Knight parody Comedy Central. All right, it's it, gonna be worth the watch. Uh, it's by YouTube channel uh, College Humor, and uh, the Batman's Pete Holmes, and uh, he's super funny. So definitely, yeah, like you said, check it out. Uh, it's not uh, the the choreography of the detective. It's not about who I am. It's about what I do. That defines me. <laughs> right, I'm done doing. I'm done doing Christian Bale Batman. You, you, you're good, but like, um, yeah, it's just like we haven't seen a true detective Batman movie yet, and people, like, like there's people on Twitter and everywhere. Uh, when I'm just scrolling through my feed, who are begging the next villain to be uh, Joker, but a new Joker. I'm like. Guys, I get it. Joker's the great, one of the greatest villains of all time. But, like, enough with Joker. We ha- Like, there's many other villains out there that we could see. Like like you said, Clayface. Like, he's got the biggest rogues gallery just above Spider-Man. And Spider-Man's rogues gallery is very wacky, and he's my very favorite superhero. So is Batman's, but Batman's has got the mo- more variety of uh, villains. So... Use that to your disposal. Please. Like, I'm sick and tired of seeing Joker. I don't want to see Penguin. Like, Deathstroke would have been cool. Mm -hmm. But, like, Clayface... I I want to see Clayface first. Like, just for shits and giggles, if we were to get a trilogy of this new Batman, and, like, whatever, I would have liked to have seen, like, open up with Clayface, really getting him into the detective stuff, and then um, the, the sequel... Be like a, a death stroke, like really testing him on a physical standpoint, and then have Joker really like kind of tear his world down. Like Joker would be a great finale to a trilogy, but everyone only wants Joker. It's Joker this, Joker that. I'm like, no, I want Clayface. Clayface has always been a villain I wanted to see, because uh, like you, you said, he's he's a great he has great potential to really uh, like kind of screw Batman over in a very uh, detective like killing spree way and like mm-hmm. like like what I, I don't know clay uh, clayface's origin story but like I'm assuming it was like some accident or some bullshit like that whatever it's always I'm assuming an like if <laughs> fell into always, a vat an <laughs> a vat of clay <laughs> and I was cooked into it oh my god dude right like I'm kiln. assuming <laughs> I'm assuming that um if the Clayface was like murdered, and he was thrown into some clay. It becomes Clayface. Like I'm assuming he would like like go one by one trying to kill these guys, and um, he wants to get away with it. So uh, that would be a really good story. Like he, like it's a revenge story, but Batman's also trying to stop him. 
that's great quality content, but like, no, well, let's get Joker for like the fifteenth movie in a row. Let's do a baby boy. And no, then, whatever. And then, and then Clayface is also the love interest, and he's been <laughs> bang, Batman's been banging Clayface the whole time. <laughs> Boom. Dude, oh my god, dude, that it becomes a psychological horror movie yeah. at that point. <laughs> He's like, oh no, <laughs> my bad penis. No he, th- <laughs> no, he thinks Rachel comes back from the dead after that explosion in the dark night. He sees Rachel on the street. He's like, Rachel, I didn't know it was you. And <laughs> Rachel's like, oh hi, uh, you want to bang her? He's like, yeah, Rachel, I thought you were dead, uh, but you look perfectly fine just yeah, after you survived the explosion. Let's I bang. <laughs> and out, and like, <laughs> like, yeah, after, I found after, you. After I'm the world's thing. greatest detective. And the real crazy detective. Now, after after they bang, and he's gonna reveal it's Clayface. It's gonna literally fuck Batman a new asshole. It's gonna be like, oh my god, first my parents, now this. Oh god, I don't <laughs> like this. I'm off. I'm out. I'm. I was on board. Now I'm back off board. <laughs> okay, we've been on this topic for quite a bit of time. Let's go to the. Final question. I'm going to actually have Nico start this one off. Uh, the question is, what is the best movie trilogy of all time? Uh, and I made sure Andy uh, elaborated from their crew podcast because I was like, does Indiana Jones count? Does it have to be just three films? He was like, ah, I don't count the Crystal Skull. So, yes. Uh, Indiana Jones, I think, was really good. Uh, I don't know if it's the best movie trilogy. I'm going to go and bet on the Captain America trilogy. I think mm-hmm. I think a Winter Soldier is. I love how they're all great movies. I love superheroes, but they're all different. We got a war movie like about a story about a soldier who just happens to be super. We got a like spy espionage thriller with Winter Soldier, and we have a big superhero epic that also has to do with a real uh, human, very personal story in Civil War. I could not agree more. Uh, I had two. Uh, I didn't really. I couldn't really pick uh, between the two because they're so drastically different. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I, I, what often you said, uh, Captain America uh, was one of them. I wasn't like I love. Uh, uh, I really, 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 really like uh, Captain America: The First Avenger. I had a lot of fun with it, and like you said, it was just a war movie with a guy who just happened to be a little bit super. Um, I liked what it stood for. It was very, I felt the passion in there. It felt genuine. I, I just really, really enjoyed that movie. Then you got Winter Soldier, that made me a real Captain America fan. Like that made. I mean, a lot of people say the, the first Avenger made Captain America cool. No, I think that uh, the Winter Soldier made Captain America mm-hmm. a fucking badass. Like sure. every after that movie, every time you saw Cap, you just like we have hope. <laughs> like this is like that basically. Like really ignited his character, showed you a lot of conflict. The action scenes were done great. Of course, it was start. This is the first MCU film directed by the Russo brothers. You're like, oh, that's where they started from. Yeah, they did. They did uh, Winter Soldier, Civil War, Infinity War. Now they're doing Endgame. Uh, Winter Soldier kinda, was just so awesome. so sick. Yeah, dude. It's uh, I just love Winter Soldier a lot. Um, I might. On a daily basis, if I'm asked the question, is Civil War better than Winter Soldier or is it the other way around? I always struggle because they're so good. Mm -hmm. Um, At the end of the day, I might slightly pick Winter Soldier over Civil War by like the smallest margin. And that's my mood today. Tomorrow I might answer differently. (laughs) But then you have Civil War. Literally, like you got all these characters that you already know and love and then you got new characters. You had like two characters that are being introduced into the MCU and that's not including uh, like you know sub sub characters and stuff like that I'm talking about major major characters with Spider-Man Black Panther and they managed to make that movie still a Captain America movie at the end of the day it's, people are joking it's Avengers 3 it's Avengers 3 I remember the memes Avengers 2.5 like yeah 2.5 yeah I remember that uh but it was still a Captain America movie at the end of the day. Like it was, it was his story arc. Like basically, Avengers is basically a Thanos movie at the end of the day because it's his story from his per, uh, point of view and all that stuff. But um, Civil War was incredible. And the one thing I love about the Russo brothers is the fact that they're very humble. They're not snobby. They're not anything like that. They just because they had two successes, 
they didn't act like they knew everything. They admitted on multiple occasions that the airport scene, they they were kind of intimidated to do. So they asked the uh, choreographer and the, the director of John Wick, uh, the first one, they asked him, like, hey, you mind helping us out with this uh, airport scene? And he did. And it's that kind of stuff that makes me like the Rooster Brothers even more because they're so they're so down to earth and they, they are willing to admit when they needed help, and which all should all good artists should, mm-hmm. because you got some actors and uh, actresses and directors, writers who act like they're so full of it because they wrote one good movie and they directed one good movie, they acted in one good movie, uh, Oscar nominations one time, they're they're they're, they're full of themselves. The Russo brothers are not like that. They directed Infinity War and Endgame, and they still had time to sit down and talk to the fans. And that shows you. Great courage and stuff like that, but um, at the but yeah, sidetracked again, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> Captain America trilogy, greatest action trilogy in my opinion. Just love that movie. And then the second one, I'll keep this one a little shorter, but uh, still gonna get some service. Toy Story. Mm. Uh, people are gonna be like, that's weird, uh, whatever. I'm like, no, no, no. The reason why it's no, in no, my it's not top. Weird at all. Uh, yeah, some people will be like, it's weird because what about, uh, you know, The Godfather? Fuck The Godfather. It's got <laughs> the tits. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what about Home Alone one, one or two or uh, so. three? Oh, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, no, Toy Story 3 uh, was so, such an emotional roller coaster, dude. I remember watching that movie and actually was in tears. Can't, I can't believe I'm going to say this. I cried just as much in Toy Story 3 than I did in uh, Infinity War. Infinity War, I cried. Not because all of my heroes were dying. It's because Spider-Man died. I was like, oh, that's kind of tough because, you know, like I mean, I knew people were going to die. I, I had a, My theory was that they were going to end off on the snap, whatever. But my entire persona, my entire mentality was that Spider-Man is going to be safe. You know why? Because Sony would have a fucking fit if they killed him off. They killed him off, and I, I it shook me to my core, and I have to laugh about it because if I don't laugh about it, I cry. That being said, um, Toy Story 3, a kid's movie about toys being alive, managed to get me to cry just as much as watching my favorite superhero of all time that got me into movies, superheroes, and stuff like that, watching him die. That's a tough thing to like kind of compare and stuff like that, so... What Toy Story, the Toy Story trilogy did was not even short of, like, insane and just pure skill. Like, it's hard to make a good kids movie and make it good for adults and kids. It's tough. It's tough making a movie in general. Making a kids movie, is it can be easy, but making a great kids movie that your parents could sit through and not want to fucking pull the trigger on their freaking skull... It's it's really tough, and they found a well balanced stuff. They didn't result to really dark, um, you know, humor that only adults will understand. It was it was mature. They didn't treat the kids like morons. They treated kids like they were human adults, not human adults, just humans mm-hmm. that had you know an active brain. And I love that so much. And it's it's one thing that makes the trilogy so well is the writing, and definitely the acting, because. If the the characters weren't as well, uh, you know, digested as they were, the movie series would not be as good. And like I said, they made me cry for like twenty minutes after that scene when they were about to be burned alive. Because you got I forget the uh, the, the the horse's name. What's a horse's name? Uh, in bullseye. Story, it's um bullseye. Thank you. When bullseye sitting there struggling, he's trying to like. I'm just I, I just see a dog trying to do that like. It's just, it's so tragic, and then you see, just them grab his hand, and they're all grabbing hands. It is emotional shit. Cause I, for a second, like they made me believe that they were gonna die. Cause we were at the hour and twenty minute mark, so it was around the time that the toys were uh, like, it was around the time that you know the movie could end. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, it's not too far fetched. Uh, but yeah, that's why it's my favorite movies uh trilogy uh, and Captain America uh. That trilogy is amazing. Any final thoughts before we close the show out? I uh, like both of your picks. Uh, just the second Toy Story, I feel like would knock it out of the contention for me. Uh, I feel there's probably a ton of trilogies that we forgot. Uh, like the original Star Wars trilogy, I think is a fucking masterpiece. Um, so that my that 
I don't even, I would have to take a long look at that to see if that might be my favorite too. Uh, yeah, but that, that that's all I got to say. Okay. Well, thank you guys for tuning into the podcast. Uh, my tangents, my tangents alone, uh, uh, got us to the eight hour 15 mark kind of tough uh <laughs> well you know it's whatever because you know i'm probably gonna not do face cam anymore because then my computer will take a shit so <laughs> we, we don't want that um uh, and my camera will take a shit too so um because that's that's running on its final like that that camera is like f- almost four years old so it's whatever but um so nico where can they find you at uh, they can find me at our YouTube channel, uh, The New World Nerds. Find me on SoundCloud with our podcast, New World Nation. You can find us on Twitter, at New World Nerds. And you can pretty sure you can find me on Gump's channel streaming whenever he does. And you guys know where to find me. You can find me at my Twitter, Gump's underscore videos. Uh, my, like I, I, I think it's official. I'm not using my Instagram anymore. I'm probably make one last post on that. So if you are following my Instagram... Download Twitter because, you know, Instagram's dead to me now. Um, I'm not going to delete it because I still have my personal account on there. But um, Instagram has been giving me, you know, some issues recently and it's kind of annoying. So, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to be less active on that. So follow me on Twitter. Like I said, Gumps underscore videos. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Ring the bell. And, guys, make sure to uh, stay tuned because we are going to be making a fan server for uh, the Lube Crew, if you guys don't know what the Lube Crew is, it's me, Nico, Andy from uh, Nerd Crew Podcast, Kennedy Reviews, uh, Crystal and Cave. Um, we're all we're all there. We're all kicking ass. Um, we're gonna be making a fan server. Uh, just chat up with some of the fans, so we don't have to like make everything so personal. So we can always keep in touch with you guys. That will be probably coming out within the next month. Uh, Nico, this is your first time hearing about that, by the way. It's the, not a lot of maintenance. It's just a bunch of fans, you know, interacting, talking with each other. So, yeah. Um, so look forward to that, guys, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. <laughs>